right. Hey, so you were uh, just in India. I saw that you were in India, and I was like, holy cow, he's in India, like, yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the talk. And I was like, is he coming back to do the talk? Which I thought you were. So are you, uh, are you, are you back on schedule? Are you exhausted? Are you, uh, you're okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm back fine. Uh, yesterday and the day before I was a little bit exhausted because uh, yeah, the trip to India, I went to uh, the uh, Larva Life Conference in India. Right. It was pretty great, uh, but because it was great, we didn't have too much sleep. So <laughs> Duno and Christophe were, were with me and I think yeah, our average sleep was like three hours a night or something. So right. when I got back, I really uh, slept well at home and now I'm I'm back on track. You're ready. Okay, good. <laughs> and you weren't there that long. I mean, you weren't there too long, were you? How long were you there? Uh, no, it was, it was only for, for two days. So, yeah, uh, wow, that's what I thought. Really short. So uh, we went to Mumbai and got a little bit of sightseeing, and then the conference was one day, and then, yeah, I already had to fly back, so. Wow. Short, trip. short and sweet. Yeah, I guess so. All right. All right, well, uh, kick it off. Thanks for being the first speaker. No and uh, I'll jump back in at the end and we'll, uh, we'll have a little chat. Okay, I'll share my screen or can you grab my screen already? Nope, you share it right through Zoom. Yeah. And I'm going to do the desktop. There you go, looks good. Yep. Okay, then I guess we're, we're good to go, right? Yep. Okay. Hello, Laracon Online. Uh, yeah, it's great to, uh, to speak at this uh, conference. I always find it a little bit strange to speak without an audience uh, because, yeah, I don't have any eye contact and yeah, I'm sitting here in a, in a room by myself. My colleagues are uh, working a little bit uh, behind me. They'll uh, uh, join watching uh, the conference uh, uh, later on. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, getting started with uh, event sourcing in Laravel. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Freek van der Heerte. I'm a partner and a developer at a Belgian company called Spasi. My uh, handle is, uh, is Freek Meuse on Twitter. I also have a blog, Meuse.be, where I talk about uh, Laravel and uh, PHP development. And together with my buddy, Matthias, I've also launched a SaaS application called Odir. It's an uptime monitoring app. And what makes it special is that it will not only monitor your homepage, but it will actually crawl your entire site and monitor all the pages. Now, my company, Spasi, has been around uh, since uh, quite some time. Uh, we've uh, started in 2003. We create websites, applications, and web shops. Our team is quite small. We consist of uh, nine uh, people and we specialize in Laravel and we know our way around Vue and React uh, as well. Now, before heading into the wonderful world of event sourcing, I'd like to say a few things about our open source software efforts. Um, currently, we have uh, around uh, 200 packages uh, registered on packages. They are being downloaded uh, for 2 million times a month now, and they've been downloaded in total for 25 uh, million times. There is a special license on them called Postcardware, which means that uh, if our code gets into your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. And yeah, we have uh, already uh, received a lot of postcards over all the world, and it keeps us motivating, so keep them coming. Um, a few of the popular packages are Laravel Backup, Media Library, and Permission. But we got a few new ones uh, as well that aren't quite as popular yet, but I think they're worth your time checking out. The first one, Query Builder, it can uh, convert uh, the a URL and all uh, the, the parameters of the URL to an eloquent query. And the second one, Laravel Blade X, allows you to uh, create view-like uh, uh, blade components. So you can uh, basically create your own HTML tags will, uh, that will translate to blade include views. It's pretty awesome. And uh, I think once you use it, uh, you, you won't uh, uh, go back. 
you also find a list of uh, open source uh, packages on our uh, on our website. Uh, I'm sure there's something there for each and every project. Um, those postcards, we also publish them on our site, so you can enjoy them as well. Um, so yeah, take a look there. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about event sourcing. So what are we going to do in this talk? First, we are going to have uh, just a small bit of theory. Uh, then I'm going to uh, demo a package called Laravel Event Projector, which is uh, made by our team. And then I'm going to uh, give a high level demo of uh, event sauce, which is a package made by uh, Frank Dion. So let's start with a little bit of theory first. In a traditional application, you're probably going to write some data in, uh, in a database. And when you are going to update the data, you're probably going to uh, overwrite the old data. So the old data, it can be accessed anymore. Yeah, you might uh, create backups of your application, but that doesn't count because your application can't reach those backups. It can't make decisions about data that is in uh, those backups. So the old data isn't there anymore. So this is it in, a, in schema form. We have our application, it writes to the database, a value X, and when we write value Y, value X just isn't there anymore. Now in an event sourced application, this works a little bit different. The application, instead of writing directly to the database, it will fire off events. And those events, they will get written in a dedicated store. This can just be a table uh, called events in uh, your database. Those events, they will also get passed to classes that we call consumers. And those consumers, they can create projections. A projection is like a different representation of all those events. We're going to take a look at an example of this soon. Uh, you also might have heard uh, words like aggregate and aggregate root. They are very important uh, to event sourcing, uh, but I'm going to explain those later in the talk. So how uh, does the architecture of uh, or the flow of, a, of an event source uh, application looks like? We have our application which sends out an event and we'll just write that into the database. And when a new event comes in, we are going to write that uh, also in the database. And a consumer class, uh, it, can, it gets all those events and it can create a projection of it. So a different representation. The cool thing is that uh, even after events have come in, we can create another consumer which can create another projection of those events. So, and now we have another projection. And when both projections are up to date and a new event comes in, both projections will be updated uh, at, the, at the time as well. So that's in a high level how uh, an event source application uh, will work. Um, what sort of type of applications can be beneficial for, uh, uh, for event sourcing? Um, well, if you have like an application that has auditing requirements, if you want to know where, uh, how an application got in the state it is, uh, if you need the history. Uh, event sourcing is also good if uh, you need uh, a special reporting for your, uh, for your application. Imagine that you have all, uh, all the events and you want to yeah, create a report of it you can uh, create like a new consumer class that reads those events and creates a projection using the, uh, the older events. Now, I should say that there is some setup required uh, for an event source application. Um, it's more uh, work than just creating a traditional one. But if you're in need of auditing requirements or reports or some kind of process modeling, then event sourcing is a great way uh, uh, to do that. Um, with that bit of theory out of the way, uh, let's get a little bit practical. Let's first talk about the event projector. 
Laravel event projector is a package made by uh, by our team. Um, it's not a full event sourcing solution. It focuses on the projection part of uh, event sourcing. It's beautifully integrated into Laravel. We use uh, Laravel's native events. Uh, we use uh, we use eloquent. We use commands there. And because uh, yeah, we use everything that Laravel provides for us out of the box, it's generally very easy to, uh, to get started with. Um, we have uh, written a lot of documentation about the package and everything that I'm going to say during this talk is uh, also described in that uh, documentation. So with that out of the way, let's get a little bit more practical and um, take a look at a real application. So the first thing that we are going to do is take a look at, an, uh, at a traditional application. I've called, I've made an, uh, an uh, application called LaraBank. Uh, let's uh, log in. And it's a very simple application. We can just create accounts. I'm going to create a savings account. I can yeah, add some money to it, some more money. I can also remove some money. And that's basically it. Let's take a look at the database of, uh, of this traditional application. So here it is in table plus. And in our accounts table, we have our savings uh, account and our balance is minus 50 but we don't know anything other than that, that at minus 50 um, uh, for, for this account. We don't know uh, the history or where that came from. Uh, let's take a look at how that application uh, is, is built. So let me open up the project in PHP Storm, Lara Bank Traditional. My computer is a little bit slower than usual, probably because it's uh, streaming. Um, so this is the, the controller, and when we are going to store a new account, we're just going to call uh, create on the on the eloquent model um, and just be done with it. And when we update stuff, we're going to call uh, add money and subtract money on that account. And that will just yeah, increase the balance or decrease the balance and save it. So it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, uh, it's called traditional for a reason. Um, let's take a look at the same application, but built using the, uh, the event projector. So here I have the exact same application. I'm going to log in as myself. And I'm going to do the same thing here. We have uh, our savings uh, account here. We are going to deposit some money and we're going to withdraw some money again. Okay, let's take a look at uh, how that looks like in the database. So I'm going to the uh, Laravel and Bank uh, event projector version. Let's refresh our accounts. We still have just savings here and our balance, um, but we also have a table here called stored events. Let's open that up. And here you can see that uh, everything I just did, creating the account, money added, money subtracted, uh, those events are stored here and the properties of those events are stored uh, here as well. So here we have uh, the amount and here we have the, the event names. Let's take a look at how this is, uh, is built in, uh, in PHP Storm. Um, so I'm going to my Lara Bank uh, event projector. Yeah, it's this one. And let's take a look at the accounts uh, controller again. And here you can see that we're not uh, using Eloquent's uh, create method directly. We have a, a special one called create with attributes here, which gets all the validated attributes from the request. Let's head in. Um, here you can see the core of this method is that we, uh, uh, we dispatch a new event called account created. 
Um, here you can also see that we create a UID here. Why do we do that? Well, um, this method, um, we are going to return an account object here. And in Laravel, yeah, events don't return anything, but we need to know how we can retrieve the account that will be created in this event. So that's why we're using UIDs. We're just going to create a UID. We're going to uh, add it to, uh, to the attributes. And then here we are going to retrieve it uh, with that uh, UID. That's uh, why we use UIDs. So if I take a look at the event itself, it's actually very simple. It has the account UID and the attributes uh, in here. OK, um, so we fire off an event. But where does the actual account uh, will be created? Well, it will be created uh, using a projector. And here I have the account uh, projector. A projector is a class that, can, uh, that will get all the, uh, all the events that are fired and can act upon those events to create an alternative representation of it. So this projector, just implements a projector, it handles these events. So when an uh, account is created, all account created will be, uh, will be executed. And the same thing with money added. All money will be, add, will be called and so forth. So here you can see that um, uh, the actual account is being created. So here we are going to uh, get the attributes out of the event, and we are going to uh, to create the actual account. Now, the the money added event it will do the same. It will just get the right account for uh, for the event, and it will update uh, the balance. Um, let's see what are we going to do next. Um, we are going to create. Uh, we are going to use another transaction. But to demo this, I want to have some more data to play with. So I'm going to my seeder. I'm going to uh, seed some more data here. And I hope this will uh, still be fast enough because I don't know if you can hear it, but the, uh, the fans of my MacBook are, uh, are blowing a bit. Um, let's take a look at the database to see what is happening here. So we're getting more and more events. We can see here, we get more events. It is done. And we have uh, some accounts uh, here as well with, uh, with balances. Um, if I refresh my Larabank application, we got a lot of, uh, of uh, extra, extra accounts here. Let's say, for instance, now, now that we uh, have all this information, we want to have a report that says uh, how, uh, what, which accounts have the most transactions. Now, in a traditional application, you would do this by um, just yeah, creating a query and just creating, uh, just querying the database and let it do all the work to do this. But using projections, you can just build another projection that will give you the right answer which is what we are going to do right now. Um, let me show you that uh, other projection. So I have a transaction count projection here. Um, and it also handles certain events. So when money gets uh, added, it will call on money added, subtract it just the same. And here we will, in the money added, the money subtracted, we will uh, record a new transaction count. Um, in transaction count, we are just going to get the user. We are going to create a record in our transaction count table, and we are going to um, uh, incre increment uh, the count. Um, how can I replay all those events uh, for that uh, for that projector? Well, the first thing we need to do when creating a new projector is uh, register it in the, uh, in the config file. So we can do that here. So here's the config file of, uh, of our package. You can see here that we have a projectors key and um, we have uh, all the projectors in here. Let me uncomment 
out uh, this one. Um, let me first show you the transaction count that it's empty. There's uh, really nothing here. And I can issue an artisan command to rebuild the transaction count projector. So transaction count projector. And with a little bit of luck, it will now replay all those events. It's going a little bit slower because uh, my Mac is doing a lot of work streaming this. But if I take a look at the, um, the table, we can see it updating here. And it's almost done. Under normal uh, circumstances, this, this takes only a second. And here you can see uh, that my account uh, has uh, the most um, uh, transactions. And we can use this yeah, in a view as well. So here it is represented uh, uh, in a view. And if I take a look at the transaction uh, controller itself, you can see that yeah, we just use our uh, our uh, stored data here. We don't do any uh, funny query. Um, we can just yeah, build a projection that matches uh, the view uh, that I uh, that I want to uh, that I want to build. Um, so it's quite powerful. If I want to have like another representation of uh, of of the data of those events, I can just create uh, another projection. Um, if you had a keen eye, you could see that the, uh, the accounts projector and the transaction count projector uh, actually did uh, uh, implemented another uh, interface. Uh, the accounts projector, it implements projector. And the transaction count uh, projector, it implements queued projector, which means that if, uh, if Horizon is, uh, is running, or if you're using queues in general, um, then all the work this, uh, this projector will do, it will be performed on a queue. So if you have like projectors where you want to immediately use the result of in the same request, you can just use a projector. If uh, the result isn't important for the current request, you can just uh, queue it up so your, your request uh, remains uh, snappy. Um, I should also say that um, We've built here that, uh, that projection here, and we have that data. But if the projection is up to date, then new events will be applied immediately to it. So if I, uh, wait, uh, let's head back to, let me open up a new tab here called transactions. We have 105 transactions here. And with any luck, if I deposit uh, something new here, this one should now be 106 without me having to uh, issue uh, an artisan command. So those projectors, uh, they stay up to date. Um, let's see in my list what I needed to, uh, to say more. Um, one more thing about the uh, event projector package is that we also have another kind of, um, of consumers. We have projectors, but we have also a thing that we, that we call uh, reactors. And they, those are classes that, uh, that handle side effects. So these, uh, these things, they work just as regular uh, projectors, but they only get fired when the original event happens, not when events are being replayed. So these are good for yeah, creating, um, uh, for, for handling side effects. You only want um, to uh, let those side effects happen when the original event uh, came in. Um, for instance, imagine that we want to send a, a mail when the amount uh, added to our bank account was more than, than 5,000. Um, then we only want to mail this when uh, the original event came in. When we replay all the events, we don't want the side effect to take place again because we only want to bother the uh, director of the FBI only once uh, with this. If you want to know more about the event projector, just head on to the uh, documentation uh, uh, on, uh, on our website. 
Okay, that's everything I wanted to say about uh, the event projector. Let's see how we are on time. We're good with time. Next up, event sauce. Event sauce is a is a package uh, which isn't made by us, but made by uh, Frank de Jonge, and it focuses more on aggregates, not so much on on the on the projectors, but on aggregates. And an aggregate is a, is a special class, and its function is uh, to model your processing and to safeguard the, the, your, your business rules. I know it sounds a little bit abstract, but we're going into a practical uh, demo in a bit. Um, whereas Laravel Event Projector is specifically built for Laravel, Event Source is framework agnostic. You can use it in any PHP project you want. Now, to get started with event cells in a Laravel application, I've created a, a separate package uh, called Laravel Event Cells, which makes it easier to set up event cells in a Laravel application. Now, in, uh, in my experience, event cells is a very powerful package, but it also adds some complexity uh, to uh, your project. And it takes a while to uh, to get uh, to get started with. Um, there's also also a lot of documentation uh, written about event source. Now, in my experience, the documentation is not that welcoming to uh, to newcomers uh, of event sourcing. If you're already using event sourcing uh, and know the the high level concepts, then the documentation is golden. But I think uh, Frank mentioned to me that he'll make some improvements for, uh, for newcomers uh, soon. So how does an uh, application using event source work? Uh, how does using an aggregate work? So we're going to build more or less the same application, a banking account, a banking application. And imagine that our application has the intention to yeah, subtract a thousand dollars from uh, from a certain account. Let's keep that in mind. Um, our application has a, a thing called an aggregate root repository, and in short, um, this is where the events of the uh, of the application or the domain messages will be stored in. Uh, we're going to see this fill up in a, in just a just a second. Now, whenever we want to write something to uh, to uh, to our application or to our account or the thing that we're we're modeling, we are going to retrieve the aggregate root from our aggregate root repository. And by retrieving, I mean that we are going to reach each and every event for the thing that we want to. Uh, uh, we want to modify and just replay it in memory. And that replaying in memory that is being done in the aggregate route. I know it's a lot to take in, but bear with me. I hope it will become clear uh, when, you see, uh, when you see the demo. In the, first, uh, in the first iteration of this, there will be no previous, uh, no previous events. So what are we going to do when we issue a command to subtract $1,000? we are going to record a new event that we are going to subtract that thousand dollars. Afterwards, we are going to persist the aggregate root into the aggregate root repository again. And when we persist something, all the new events that came in uh, will get written as a new entry in the aggregate root repository. Um, and you can see here that we work with UIDs uh, as well to separate, uh, in our example, uh, different accounts. Now, new events, they will get uh, sent to consumers as well. And I've said that uh, a special class of consumer is a projector, which can yeah, build like the, uh, the accounts uh, again. Imagine that we are going to subtract, uh, you do, uh, do another subtraction here. Then the cycle repeats again. We are going to retrieve each and every event for our account. So subtract a thousand and we are going to replay this in memory. New events, they will, uh, will be recorded. So this will be recorded. That new event 
it will be persisted again. The consumer will receive it as well, and it will update uh, the account. Okay, now let's do a third thing here. We're going to subtract some more money here. And again, we are going to retrieve all the previous events and replay them again inside of memory of the aggregate route. And we are going to record the new event again. But now comes the key. Why do we retrieve all those, uh, all those events again? Well, the aggregate route is something that is being played in memory. So we can yeah, do all, uh, we can do some stuff with all those events that come in. We could, for instance, in memory, just count how many subtractions there were in a row. And when we could, uh, for instance, say, hey, there are three uh, subtractions in a row, we, then we are going to raise a new event called more money needed and persist that again. Now, that subtraction, it could go again to the, to the consumer, the account consumer, and we are going to update our accounts table. And that more money needed event, we could pass it to a new consumer and we could yeah, propose a loan to the, to the owner of the account. So an aggregate route is a sort of a class where we, that, uh, that is, uh, its function is to, to implement and to safeguard the business rules of, uh, of your application. Um, I hope it will become more clear when, uh, when you see uh, a practical demo, which is what we are going to do now. Um, let's head over again to PHP Storm. Oh. But my Mac is becoming so slow that I'm not seeing even my, I can't switch again. I'm trying to use the app switcher, but it doesn't allow me. I don't know video. I'm sorry for the technical issues. I'll try to do this. No, in closing, and this is really a shame that I don't dare to turn and stop the share because otherwise I'll, I'll lose you all. You can turn off the, uh, the desktop sharing. Can I yeah. try to, uh, to stop it here? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's stop share here. Okay. Ah, okay. Now I have my uh, my desktop back. Let's try sharing it. Uh, sharing it again. So, can you see it now, Ryan? Yep. Looks good. Okay. Perfect. Sorry for the for the little uh, snack here. Um. So, let's first go to the to the browser, and we are going to uh, go to the same application again. But this one uses uh, uses events also. So I'm typing in my secret password. Um, and what are we going to do here is we're also going to uh, create a savings account. We're going to add some money to it and some more and yet some more. And uh, we are going to um, withdraw some money, a lot of money. I've, I've, bought, I've bought something good. And in this application, I've uh, implemented the business rule that after um, that, that the account limit uh, is 5,000. I can't go below 5,000. So I'm going to try that, uh, to try that once uh, to go below 5,000. So uh, here it goes. I can't subtract 5,000 because I cannot go below 5,000. And a special thing uh, in this application is if I try to go uh, below 5,000 three times in a row, uh, a mail will be sent uh, for a loan proposal. Now, let me um, 
open up a telescope so you can see that a male will be sent. So I have males here, no males yet. Um, so this is event projector, but there's some chrome in the way, do it like this. So I've only um, hit the, the limit uh, just once. Now I'm going to hit the limit uh, the second time and uh, no mail uh, will be sent. Wait, I'm going to, it is a little bit low here, so no mail is sent. And if I do it the third time, there's a mail sent for a loan proposal. So let's see how we use event styles to do just that. Before heading into the code, I'm also going to show you uh, the database once again. So here we have our uh, uh, Lara Bank event sauce. Here you can see uh, that we just have our, uh, our account here, our savings account, we have a balance. And uh, all the events are, are stored in a table called account uh, messages. And here you can see yeah, the different event types that, that were raised. So here you can see that our account was created. We added some money, we subtracted some money. We hit our limit three times. And here we raised an event uh, called uh, more money needed. Now the, uh, the other data of, uh, of these events is in the payload column. And if I open that up, you can see here uh, yeah, that our payload uh, contains the, uh, the amount with subtraction. We got the amount as well. And the uh, account limit hit, it has no payload because it's just uh, the name of, uh, of the event is enough here. Okay, let's take a look at PHP Storm to uh, see how, uh, how we use event source to, uh, to accomplish this. Um, let's open up the right project, event source. And let's start from the controller once again. And so this is the accounts controller. And let's see how um, we uh, create a new account. So create account, it's, uh, it gets done in, uh, in the store uh, message. And uh, we're not going to uh, yeah, do the uh, account creation directly here. Instead of that, we are going to uh, create a command here, a command that tells to our application, hey, we have an intention of creating uh, a command, uh, of creating an account, I mean, sorry. Um, this create account uh, command is actually a very, a very simple one. Um, it will just create, it will just have these uh, three properties. Um, the account identifier, that is uh, basically just a UID that is uh, uh, wrapped up in a class, so we can uh, type in that. We have uh, the name of our account, and we also have the uh, user who is currently logged in, so we can know for which user we are going to create this. Now, if I head over to uh, create account here, you can see that I've uh, I've not lied. It's a very simple class, just uh, uh, three. Uh, three properties here, which are functions to, to get it. And uh, those simple uh, commands and events, um, events also has uh, some features to just auto generate those. So you don't have to hand roll them yourself. So in events also, you can have like a, um, a YAML file uh, to just uh, create uh, those easily. And there's an artisan command which will create a file containing all uh, those commands in events so you don't have to uh, code them uh, by hand. So we have that command here. We are going to pass it to a thing called the command handler. The command handler was just uh, injected into our controller here. Let's take a look at that handle method. So in this is the command handler. And in our uh, command handler, we are going to get the uh, identifier of, of, uh, of the command, which is that UID that we uh, generated. And that is our aggregate root ID. And uh, let's take a look at the database again. 
so uh, that uh, that value is actually that UUID that belongs to uh, to that account. What are we going to do next? Is we are going to retrieve uh, our aggregate root from our repository. So we are going to get all the uh, the previous uh, events, but with create account there are no uh, previous event. Um, next up, we are going to see uh, which method we are going to call on our aggregate route, and it depends on the kind of command that was given. In this case, we are uh, we have a create account, so we are going to call create uh, account on our aggregate route. Here, we are going to raise our event. We are going to record the event. We are going to record that a new account was created and uh, we give it the name of the account and for which user it has been created for. Now, jumping back to the command handler, the next thing that we are going to do is to persist this, uh, this aggregate route. And remember, if you persist the aggregate route into the repository, then each event that was recorded will be written in the database, uh, will be written yeah, as a um, as a as a domain message here. So that's this that uh, that was created account created. Now, how does the actual account uh, will be created? So so this one, um, it will be done again by a projector, and um, here is that specific projector called account projector again. And here you can see that um, in event source, a projector is a sort of a consumer, a consuming class. And a consumer is a class that just gets the newly recorded events. In event source, this is just an interface. And you can see that it's a very simple interface. You just handle the message and that's it. So when a new message comes in, that new uh, that, that domain message that we just stored, um, we are going to see, hey, is this um, account created event? And when, uh, the, when it is, we are going to create that account. That's how that works. Let's do it uh, once more, but a little bit faster. If I go to the accounts controller again, let's see how money gets added to, uh, to a specific account. We are just going to create and uh, add money uh, command. We are going to pass it to our command handler. We are uh, yeah, going to get the aggregate root. We are going to replay all events, going to into the, the purpose of this later. We are uh, going to call a certain um, method on our aggregate root according to the, uh, to the command, so add money. Here, we are going to record that uh, money uh, has been added. So with this uh, with this method, we are going to record yeah, that new new message. So uh, in our domain messages, this one will get written. The second one, money added, and in our projector, um, we will just update our account. Let's jump back to the aggregate route again. You might have noticed that there are uh, several other methods in here that uh, begin with apply. So we have our create account, but we also have our apply create account. We have our add money, but we also have our apply money added. Now, what do these apply um, uh, functions do? Well, when, whenever we replay all the events, when we reconstitute our aggregate route uh, with all those events, these apply methods will get, uh, get called. And because our aggregate route uh, just lives in memory, we can just uh, yeah, add some dynamic properties to our aggregate route. So uh, for instance, whenever uh, uh, money added gets gets replayed. We'll just update uh, the balance if we want to. Maybe we need the balance to uh, make uh, some decision, decisions out of that. 
And with apply money subtracted, we are just going to um, uh, subtract some money in memory of this aggregate root. Now to get let you uh, let you feel this a bit, um, let's create uh, another uh, another event. I'm going to tail uh, the log, and I'm going to uh, put these log statements out of comment. And if I try to do something new now, so let's uh, add 50 to it. You can see that those, while reconstituting all of our, uh, when we were reconstituting our uh, aggregate route uh, with all the uh, saved events, you can see that we passed through all, uh, all previous events. You can see the alt amounts that, uh, that I input here. Now, how can we leverage this? Uh, I'll just uh, leave this. I don't need to change that. Uh, remember that we had like our special events that we had here. Uh, let me see. Let me make this a little bit bigger again for you. Those account limit hits and those more money needed. Let's see how, how we created those. Well, um, when we subtract money, um, we have some special logic here in place. We are first are going to see if we have sufficient funds to subtract uh, that amount. Now, if we have sufficient funds, we're just going to uh, record uh, that event and everything will, uh, will happen like usual. But the cool thing is yeah, that we can model the, uh, the unhappy part as well. Um, let's take a look at what happens when we have, uh, how we test if we have uh, sufficient funds. So it's very simple. We are going to use the balance, which we calculated in memory. And we are going to see if the current balance minus the amount that we want to, uh, to subtract, if it is uh, not lower than the account limit. The account limit is just a number that uh, lives as a property on this, uh, on this aggregate route. Uh, let's head back to here. So imagine that if we don't have enough money, we are going to record a new event called uh, account limit hit. And let's keep this, uh, this out of mind for, for now. We are going to throw an exception, not enough funds. Now you might think, yeah, if we throw an exception here, this won't be, be recorded anymore, right? But that's actually not the case. If we jump back to the um, uh, to the account handler, this is the place where we call everything on our aggregate route. You can see that we use finally here. So even though we throw an exception, we will still persist all the events that we raised in our aggregate route. Um, let's take a little look, little uh, little further look at that exception. Not enough funds. It is a domain exception, and in my exception handler, I've uh, I've had a I've added a special case for this, uh, like you know from validation errors that we are just going to flash the exception message and return back. So that's how uh, how that works. So with this, we've uh, protected uh, our account that you can't go below five thousand. But let's take it a little bit further. How do we do like a loan proposal after uh, we've hit the limit for three times? Well, there's here a needs more money check. And how does a needs more money check work? It has a counter here called account limit hit in a row if it is uh, bigger than three. But how do we know that account limit hit in a row? Well, um, if I go to uh, the account limit, it apply a method. So this is being called whenever we reconstitute our aggregate route from events. And whenever we hit that account uh, limit, we are just going to increase our little counter in memory. When we uh, actually had enough funds, we are just going to uh, reset that little counter. So when we hit that, uh, when, when the counter is bigger than three, we are going to record another event called more money needed. 
And we have uh, an offer loan consumer that acts on that event. So this is also a consumer class. It gets uh, all the new events. And when it gets an event of more money needed, um, it will actually send us uh, a new loan proposal via mail. That's how that works. So this is incredibly powerful. You can uh, not only do stuff uh, when uh, the good things happen, but you can also handle all, all the bad stuff. And you should also uh, have noticed that in our, um, in our account aggregate route, all the business logic of, of how our accounts domain works, it, uh, it, uh, it lives here in this closet. It isn't scattered in our application. You can also see that uh, in an event sourced application, you can have like multiple uh, aggregate true and aggregate true cost, right? Mostly you are going to use this for each and every process that you want to model. And I know I picked a traditional uh, uh, example here, uh, which may be a little bit boring, but it's, it was easy for me to, um, to implement and to, to show you uh, how you can implement uh, an interesting rule here, but you can apply this uh, this kind of structure to a lot of other kinds of projects as well. You can, for instance, use this to model uh, a, a shopping cart basket to see yeah, what happens there and act on certain events that, that happen there. So if you want to uh, know some more examples, um, I think in the event source documentation, there are a few more examples there as well. So this is the, uh, the thing I, I, I wanted to, to show you for event source. So let's start wrapping things up. So I've shown you uh, the Laravel event projector, which is like an easy to use package to get started with, uh, with projections. It just hooks into everything that Laravel has. It can yeah, replay. Uh, uh, events, but it has no support for aggregates uh, whatsoever. It focuses on uh, on those projections. Event source is a framework agnostic package, and it has uh, yeah awesome support for for aggregates. So it's, it's it makes it uh, a breeze to yeah, model uh, your processes, but it has no replay capabilities or no projection capabilities out of the box. You should bring that, uh, bring that yourself. And if you want to use event, or event source in a Laravel application, um, yeah, there is an, a separate bindings package uh, for that, which you can uh, uh, take a look at on our uh, GitHub account. Um, for, event so for event sourcing, the, uh, a thing that, that is being said uh, a lot is that writes are harder and reads are easier. I, I hope you understand that now, that to write something, you need to do like yeah, a lot of uh, processing uh, first, and there's a lot of infrastructure in place. But the other side of the metal is that you, you can just create your projections uh, and that reading them is just going through a table. It makes that very easy. You don't need any um, complicated query anymore because you've prepared all the work for this in your projector and you've molded the data to something uh, you you need in your view. Now, I stole this this quote from a presentation I saw from uh, from Frank de Jonge earlier this year. Event sourcing makes the easy things harder and the harder things easier. Imagine implementing uh, that rule I showed you, uh, where like if you uh, hit the account limit three times, then you should send the mail. It's very easy to uh, to do that if you have access to all the previous events. In traditional application, you would build a lot of logic around it, but uh, using event sourcing, implementing such rules will become much easier. Now, if you want to store just yeah one attribute. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, work you need to do before in event sourcing before you can do that. So event sourcing makes the easy things harder and the harding things easier. I agree with that, that statement. If you want to take a look at the applications uh, I've shown you, I've uh, 
uh, I've open sourced all three. You can uh, you can find them here. And if you want to read some more, uh, the first link is uh, uh, a description how Kickstarter um, uses event sourcing, and it inspired me to uh, to create the Laravel event projector package. And the uh, the second uh, the no the uh, the next three links are to the repositories of uh, of uh, of packages that allow you to do event sourcing. The last one proof. Uh, we didn't handle it yet. It's a it's a it's a very heavy package. It's uh, it's it has for every aspect of the event sourcing. It has a separate package, and I uh, haven't played with it yet. I've heard that it's very powerful, but also uh, uh, it takes a, a while to get get used to and, uh, and install it. But if you want to take it further, you could take a look at uh, at that one as well. So we're at the end of the presentation. Um, you can um, uh, view the, the slides again. I've uploaded them to, to Speaker Deck. If you're in need for uh, a package for your project, uh, take a look at, uh, at our company page. We've uh, got a big list of components on the open source page. If you want to know what's, uh, what's happening in Laravel PHP, take a look at my blog. If you're looking for an um, a good uh, uptime monitoring solution and Zelle monitoring solution, head over to odirp.app. And uh, I'm also happy to share that together with my uh, my buddy Dries Vince, I'm organizing my own conference called Full Stack Europe, which will be held in Belgium uh, in October of this year. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, subscribe to the mail list on, uh, on fullstackeurope.com. Uh, lastly, I would also like to thank my uh, my buddy Dries Fins, uh, yeah, who helped me with understanding uh, the event sauce and uh, uh, with making the, the demo application a bit better. So, with that, I thank you for your attention. All right, awesome, man. Cool. <laughs> Great job. Um, that uh, you, you guys doing a conference? Uh, I love that idea. That's going to be cool. Yeah, we, we think so too. So my buddy Dries and I, we already organized a couple of, uh, of user group together with another buddy of ours, Rias, in uh, different cities in Belgium. We now have the full stack Antwerp, Brussels, and Ghent user groups. And for us, it was yeah, the logical step to, yeah, to uh, make it uh, one level further and do a conference because our user groups, they attract a lot of people nowadays. So it makes sense to, uh, to invite us all up to a conference. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it myself as well. Uh, I'm always looking for excuses, so uh, I will definitely. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Antwerp is beautiful, so. Yeah, I know, and that's a place I've never been either, so. Um, all right, we have, let's just do, I guess, one question here. Uh, there's, a, there's a few in chat, or quite a few, but uh, I guess you kind of touched on it at the end, but scalability-wise, I guess, like, with reads, seemingly being much faster. Um, I, I suppose overall that this would be a pretty scalable approach. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of questions I get around this is that, uh, isn't it uh, yeah, good for, isn't it bad for performance that you are reading all those, uh, those events again when, we are, when you are reconstituting the aggregate route? But actually it's a very simple operation. It just works on that UID. Uh, for a database, just fetching uh, records on, on, on UID basis on one basis, it's, it's next to nothing. Right. Uh, even if, if you have like uh, 200 events there, it's, it's, all one, it, it's all one query because they, they are being uh, pulled, uh, pulled back in, in one row. Right. Uh, the replaying is, is all in memory. And sure, it's, it will have a little bit hit on performance, but you'll gain so much if you're uh, if you're not having to do like a complicated query, if you can replace that complicated complicated query by yeah, just a projection, you just get that back. Right. Yeah, I think in, that's the thing too. Is like in a real application that's got a lot of customers, there's usually a lot of really funky queries. So like you can make a test application where like oh yeah, this is slower than that than the normal way, but. Yeah when you have a real application that has, you know, a query with 
a bunch of joins and all kinds of weird stuff, you know, calculations in the query and everything else that uh, when you replace that with this, then uh, I'm sure it's quite a bit faster. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's like I said uh, in one of the last slides, the, the writing becomes a little bit uh, bit harder because yeah, you have to read all the events, you have to process the logic, but the reading part, once you've done that, yeah, it becomes laughably easy. So you, I think the in if you have the, the net difference between those times, yeah, you will actually have gained performance by this. Yeah, 